previously on Storybook Amusement. Since its closure, Pandemonium Cartoon Circus has not been seen by the general public in its entirety, with only a few partial clips and even fewer pictures surfacing online. In the theme park world, Pandemonium Cartoon Circus is considered lost media. Oh, no way. I gotta update the video. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, come on in as we rediscover a lost chapter in theme park history. While Universal is home to cutting edge theater shows today, one of Islands of Adventure's earliest attractions remains somewhere between infamy and obscurity. It closed less than a year into operation, leaving the amphitheater empty and unused to this day. Step right up, this is the forgotten history of Pandemonium Cartoon Circus. Universal Florida, when planning its second gate, originally developed a concept for Cartoon World. Among the proposed theme park's many lands, one was set to be based on the cartoon characters by animator and producer Jay Ward and Fleischer Studios. The land would have included water-based attractions and a live dinner show at Rough House Cafe from the Popeye the Sailor Man series. This sailor-themed show would have featured musical numbers, dancing, and acrobatic routines. However, the plans for the unbuilt theme park fell through in 1993, and to take its place, Universal moved forward in designing a new concept, Islands of Adventure. Despite adjustments, the general idea to build a toon-themed land carried over to the new plans. In 1999, Islands of Adventure debuted with many themed areas, including Toon Lagoon, a land based on over 150 characters from yesteryear's cartoons and the Sunday Funnies. This island brought comics to life. As Toon Lagoon show producer Chris Stapleton put it, quote, from the music to the special effects, we wanted you to feel like you're in the melodrama, unquote. Many of Toon Lagoon's attractions were still being developed and were not operating during the park's preview days. This included its two landmark rides as well as a 2,000-seat open-air venue named Toon Lagoon Amphitheater. This was a venue that would be home to an upcoming stage show, but the cast at the time was still going through their months of rehearsals, which were held on the stage for the Wild 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 West stunt show at Universal Studios Florida. In the weeks before the park opened, the amphitheater's bar was set high by hosting a taping for a nationally broadcasted prime time production, The Rosie O'Donnell Show. Once the brand new Islands of Adventure opened to the public, Toon Lagoon Amphitheater was home to a continual live stage show called Rocky and Bullwinkle's Pandemonium Cartoon Circus, which was produced by Tom Garrick D and Scott Helmstetter. With a traditional ringmaster walking around on stilts, the theater's entrance was marked with a large neon sign that read Pandemonium Cartoon Circus, with a few of the show's characters. Another sign displayed the show's name, showtimes, and two of its characters, Rocky and Bullwinkle. The amphitheater was decorated on the outside and alongside the venue's bleachers with banners displaying characters from the show. Toon Lagoon Amphitheater had a large multi-leveled plaza with a loop of original music specific to the area. The soundtrack had marching band circus songs that followed the same melody of the tunes from Pandemonium Cartoon Circus. Inside, the stage had an intricate, time-honored, circus-inspired backdrop and was decorated with large cartoon character murals on either side. A marquee with the show's name above the stage completed the venue's aesthetic. The handcrafted, colorful circus-themed set was designed by Bob Harris and Piper Productions and matched the show's quirkiness. The set was installed shortly before the park opened and was touched up authentically to the licensed characters. The costumes worn were built by custom characters John David Ridge and USC Costume Shop. With only a brief time before the park officially opened to the public, the show's cast had the opportunity to run through rehearsals on their main stage before debuting to park guests. Now having completed some circus training and months of rehearsals, the circus was officially ready to come to tune. Pandemonium Cartoon Circus premiered on Islands of Adventure's proper opening day, May 28, 1999. The show was formatted in a series of circus acts starring the residents of Toon Lagoon. It started with a circus-inspired custodian cleaning up the venue and entertaining the audience as they filled the bleachers. The custodian interacted with guests, making gags and jokes while a circus overture played. Over the loudspeakers, Bullwinkle announced that the show was starting soon. The lights flashed and the 
music swelled to a fanfare as the custodian pulled the curtains back. Only, there was another curtain in the way. The custodian sucked up that curtain with their vacuum, revealing the grand circus set. The custodian set up the first number, The Circus is Coming to Tune, a show tune style song led by Popeye and Olive Oil. The characters all joined in on the singing and dancing, but their fun would quickly be foiled as villains Boris, Natasha, Snidely Whiplash, and Bluto crashed the circus. They took the stage and sang along with Toon Lagoon's characters, setting up a magic trick style reveal of Woody Woodpecker and the show's ring booster, Bullwinkle, soon accompanied by his assistant, Rocky. They were met by Boris and Natasha, who had a quote-unquote gift for them that they'd get a bang out of. As Bullwinkle was opening the box, there was a lull, no more sound of sparks. Boris opened the box to check it, and to no one's surprise, the bomb and his devious plan blew up in his face, leaving him dazed as Rocky and Bullwinkle laughed the villains off stage. Natasha left saying, we'll be back, followed by the ring booster introducing the first act, Dudley Do-Right in Barry the Hatchet. Dudley Do-Right and Nell Fenwick, now in colorful circus outfits, marched out to a majestic soundtrack, setting up for an axe-throwing stunt. After Nell blindfolded Dudley Do-Right, their nemesis Snidely Whiplash captured Nell against Dudley's knowing and put her on a rotating table. Duped by his foe, Dudley Do-Right was fooled into throwing axes that came within inches of striking Nell, popping the balloons around her. Nell escaped from the rotating table and ran to do a dance routine with the still blindfolded Dudley, but Snidely Whiplash hindered the act and took Nell hostage to tie her to a railroad track, a plot the show would follow through its end. At this point, Rocky and Bullwinkle came out with a magic trick gag and announced the next number, a song called Funny Business sung by Toon Lagoon's characters. At one point during the bit, Natasha deviously leaked helium, and all the singers squeaked with high-pitched voices until Broomhilda snapped them out of it. Once the curtain closed, Snidely Whiplash dragged Nell Fenwick on stage while Dudley Do-Right came to her rescue on a hobby horse bumping Bullwinkle along the way, the ring booster balancing plates on sticks, and Rocky set up Betty Boop's song, Starstruck. She balanced on a crescent moon descending from the rafters. In a soigné fashion, she acrobatically swung around while belting out the ballad. Down below, four bimbo characters climbed lampposts and did gymnastics to accompany her. Bubbles speckled the air, and the elegant song transitioned to Snidely and the captured Nell being chased by Dudley Do-Right. Again, Rocky and Bullwinkle gave an introduction to the next act, Blondie, Dagwood, Beetle Bailey, and Zero on roller skates. Boris and Natasha ran out to catch Dagwood, and Boris struck him with a comically large boxing glove mechanism just before the skit ended. Led off by Rocky and Bullwinkle, Olive Oil performed the next act, a tightrope stunt. The big, bad Bluto appeared on stage to resounding boos from the crowd. Popeye came to the rescue and confronted Bluto on the tightrope. Bluto struck a match and threw it underneath Popeye in the tightrope, causing a fire underneath. But Olive Oil came just in time to give him a can of spinach to deliver the knockout punch that sent Bluto plummeting. Popeye rescued Olive Oil from the flaming tightrope and celebrated to a chorus that sang, Go, Popeye, go. Snidely Whiplash then ran on stage with the damsel in distress, Nell, laying down a railroad track to tie her to. Dudley Do-Right was able to save her from the tracks of the Woody Woodpecker conducted Toon Lagoon special. In Jubilee, the characters sang a song called The Last Laugh. They showcased circus tricks before the curtains opened, unveiling the show's grand finale. The villains interrupted the performance, bringing an active bomb on the stage. The custodian, making their way to clean up the venue, somehow, some way, was able to save the day with their vacuum. The song continued, soon hitting its final note, and the curtains closed on Pandemonium Cartoon Circus. The clumsy custodian, or the hero at this point, came out one last time to thank everyone for coming. That's a wrap. Guests had the opportunity after the show to take pictures with the characters. Islands of Adventure as a whole, upon opening in 1999, had an ambitious and auspicious lineup full of thrill-heavy attractions. Pandemonium Cartoon Circus was one of the few attractions tailored for families and guests of all ages. Universal Creative quickly addressed the lack of family-focused offerings in the park and began developing new opportunities for kid-friendly attractions. Pandemonium Cartoon Circus, however, was not in the park's future. It already seemed to be on borrowed time. Attendance for the show wasn't strong and the park was quick to move on. The curtains closed on Pandemonium Cartoon Circus for the final time, February 29th, 2000, only about nine months after first debuting to guests. According to those who worked on it, the show wasn't planned to be temporary. As with many theme park shows,
shows, Pandemonium Cartoon Circus's success depended on its popularity. Whether the show would continue was based on attendance and guest feedback. Even at the turn of the new millennium, the show's characters from days gone by weren't highly relevant with younger audiences. Considering the family-oriented target demographic, this may have contributed to the show's demise. The majority of kids at that time were tuned into Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, not so much vintage comics. Since its closure, Pandemonium Cartoon Circus hadn't been seen by the general public in its entirety for over two decades. Only a few clips surfaced online. For years, the show was considered lost media in the theme park world. Thankfully, in 2021, a former team member reached out to Storybook Amusement and was kind enough to get a video of the show fully digitized. The complete show is now available to watch online. Another chapter in theme park history has been preserved. Upon the show's cancellation, Toon Lagoon Amphitheater was stripped of its circus theming and did not receive a full-time replacement. Despite that, the amphitheater remained standing in the park. The venue was insipidly used on occasion for character meet and greets, and it was soon after rumored to receive a replacement production, a new X-Men stunt show to complement the nearby Marvel superhero island. That never made its way into the park. Instead, the stage would be used on and off for several short-lived shows through the years after losing its signature show. In summer 2000, Universal debuted a different X show, not X-Men. And no, not that kind. Extreme Adventure, stylized with X's, took over in Toon Lagoon Amphitheater. The stage that once had Blondie and Dagwood skating around now hosted an extreme sports stunt show including BMX bikers, inline skaters, and skateboarders. The show tied loosely back to the Toon Lagoon theme with an appearance by Woody Woodpecker. Extreme Adventure operated during the park's peak seasons for 2000 and 2001, but did not return in 2002. Rather, the Extreme Sports Show was completely revamped, now called Called Matt Hoffman's Freakin' Crazy Stunt Show. This show ran from 2002 to 2004, featuring action sport athletes performing BMX stunts on a large halfpipe. Temporarily, around 2003, while the main venue was being prepared for another production, Universal used the amphitheater's entrance plaza as a stage for a street show called Toon Lagoon Beach Bash. This got the crowd in on the fun, with engaging audience participation segments such as a hula hoop contest, dancing games, and a limbo competition, all to a surf soundtrack from long ago. Through the same time, Time period, the amphitheater hosted a seasonal stage show for Universal's Halloween Horror Nights event. Different versions of Bill and Ted's excellent Halloween adventure spooked and entertained guests every year in the amphitheater from 2002 until 2005. From late 2006 until summer 2007, the amphitheater was the home studio for a weekday daytime NBC talk show called I Village Live. The live studio audience was a combination of theme park guests and those who reserved seats for the show and were admitted through another entrance. In the mid to the late 2000s, a band called The Outer Tunes played on a small stage outside the amphitheater. Occasionally featuring Popeye, the group played timeless cartoon theme songs such as Popeye the Sailor Man, The Simpsons, The Flintstones, and The Jetsons. The amphitheater got a new circus-inspired tenant in 2010, only this time more extreme. Matt Hoffman's Agro Circus was an extreme sports stunt show similar to previous versions, but this added a globe of death and other stunts while performers wore colorful circus outfits. Operating only during peak seasons, this show lasted from 2010 to 2011. Toon Lagoon Amphitheater from time to time is used for special events, private events, and other miscellaneous purposes. Take for example the Celebration of Harry Potter event held from 2014 to 2018, the Incredible Hulk Coaster VR preview in summer 2016, and a showing of an Impractical Joker segment, among other occasions. As of 2021, the amphitheater is not home to a permanent attraction, and has not been since opening in 1999. But Pandemonium Cartoon Circus still has a small presence in the park through a banner outside the venue. It has Woody Woodpecker on it in text that reads, Woody Woodpecker in Funny Business, which was one of the songs heard in the now defunct show. An instrumental version the song can still be heard outside the venue. Other banners commemorate the Pandemonium Cartoon Circus acts from Dudley Do-Right, Boris and Natasha, and Blondie and Dagwood, among others. The banners have been in the park since opening in 1999, as seen with this Broomhilda Every Which Way decoration that is still in the park today. Pandemonium Cartoon Circus captured the zany and whimsical style of Toon Lagoon. Though short-lived, the show had its fair share of characteristic humor and art design that added to the area's comic strip feel. The amphitheater, willingly or not, stands as a reminder of the park's history, and its future is wide open for potential new attractions. Too bad Universal turned the page on Pandemonium Cartoon Circus. But hey, that's the funny business for you.